yesterday we started. We kicked up this hour with a debate with uh, Neil McCabe, as I recall, about uh, gun control in the Second Amendment. And I asked the question: Might it not be time to say, uh, you know, slavery was part of this country at its founding? It was determined to be, you know, an evil, and now it's considered an anachronism. Might not the Second Amendment also be an anachronism? And then I suggested that the Second Amendment actually was put in place to protect slavery. And here's how. This is Patrick Henry's speech in 1788 to the Virginia Ratifying Convention. Patrick Henry was the largest slaveholder in the state of Virginia. Ironically, the guy who said, give me liberty or give me death. And they were deciding whether or not to ratify the Constitution. And the two big problems that they had with the Constitution were, one, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution gives Congress the power to raise an army. Now, they had just been through a war, through the Re Revolutionary War, and there had been a couple of generals in the Revolutionary War, and this was a, a practice that was actually widespread among the British, who were saying that any, any uh, slaves who had run away, they would take them in and free them after the war if they fought on their side. And so, A, Patrick Henry was worried that if the federal government and keep in mind, half the states were hostile to slavery. If the federal government was to raise an army and shut down the militias in the states, that that might end the institution of slavery because the, the southern states all had what were called well-regulated militias. They were also known as slave patrols. They were called slave patrols. That was the overt name. There have been books written on this. And, uh, you know, so, so Patrick Henry, in his speech, June 1788, he says... Among ten, th he's talking about the Constitution and how we shouldn't ratify this unless the Second Amendment is attached to it, because it'll protect us, our states. It'll allow our states to continue to have slave patrols, to have these militias. He says, among ten thousand implied powers which they may assume, they being the federal government, which included and included Northerners, they may, if we be engaged in war, liberate every one of your slaves if they please. This was Patrick Henry talking to his buddies, the other slaveholders in Virginia. And he said, and this must and will be done by men, a majority of whom have not a common interest with you. Right? In other words, the Northerners. And he said, they will therefore have no feeling for your interests. It has been repeatedly said here that the great object of a national government was national defense. That power which is said to be intended for security and safety may be re rendered detestable and oppressive. In other words, Raising an army at the federal level could be used to end slavery in Virginia. And Patrick Henry was speaking out against that. This is why the Second Amendment starts out with, in order to protect the security of, uh, uh, in order to protect, I'm, I, I don't have it in front of me, so, but the words are to the effect of, in order to protect the, the security of a free state, not a free nation. He was worried about the state of Virginia. He said, in this state, there are 236,000 blacks, and there are many in several other states. May Congress not say that every black man must fight? Did we not see a little of this in the last war? He's talking about what the British did. Acts of assembly passed that every slave would go into the army should be free. And then he talks about how if this Constitution passes, people in the North will use it to end slavery in the South. He says, he says they will search that paper, being the Constitution. And... And, and Article 1, Section 8 gives the federal government power to raise an army. Article 2 gives the president commander-in-chief status of the army. Right? He says, they will search that paper, the Constitution, and see if they have the power of manumission, of freeing slaves. And have they not, sir? Have they not power to provide for the general defense and welfare? May they not think that these call for the abolition of slavery? May they not pronounce all slaves free? And will they not be warranted by that power? This is no ambiguous implication or logical deduction. The paper speaks to the point. They have that power in clear, unequivocal terms and will certainly and clearly exercise it. This is Patrick Henry. So he's saying the state of Virginia has to keep its own militia and the Constitution says that only the federal government can have an army. He says, in this situation, I see a great deal of the property of the people of Virginia in jeopardy. Property, of course, being a euphemism for slaves. He says, is it practicable by any humane means to liberate them without producing the most dreadful and ruinous consequences? Well, it would be dreadful and ruinous for Patrick Henry. He was the largest slaveholder in the, in the entire state of Virginia. 
So the compromise that Madison worked out was we will amend the Constitution to say that states can have quote, re well-regulated militias, which is in the South is what they called the slave patrols that, that preserved the institution of slavery. That we will have well-regulated militias in exchange, you put this amendment to the Constitution, in, in exchange for that, Virginia will sign on to the Constitution. And I just read you Patrick Henry's speech, George Mason made a similar speech. Uh, James Madison said, you know, I, I really don't see this as a conflict I, I don't think that the North is going to use the power to raise an army to end slavery, but I'll go along with it. And, you know, this is how it played out. So, isn't it time for us to say the Second Amendment is there to preserve the slave patrols, to preserve the institution of slavery, so it's time for us to say, you know, the Second Amendment is an anachronism. In fact, arguably, the Second Amendment was nullified by the Thirteenth Amendment. It's like people don't know their history. People don't know American history. And the NRA has been so good at preventing people from knowing American history that the Second Amendment was, was purely put in place. At the, at, the, at the, not just request of Patrick Henry, Patrick Henry was saying, you know, the Virginia delegation will not sign this Constitution, which would have blown the whole thing up because it was the biggest state in between the North and the South. It was the swing state, as it were. If, Vir if Virginia didn't go along, there would be no Constitution. And Patrick Henry is saying, if, if we don't get an amendment that will allow us to preserve our slave patrols in the South, our well-regulated militias, be necessary for the security of a free state, not a free nation, a free state, the state of Virginia, state militias, if we don't get that, we're not going to sign this thing. Isn't it time for us to say, hey, you know, this thing, uh, this Second Amendment, this, not only does it not apply to today, but arguably the 13th Amendment nullified it. We'll be back.